I would like to share with you that there are dollar tickets for door prizes, which are from awesome John Kleckner. Please stand. Please stand. actually come up here. John Kleckner has been such a very, very good friend. Please stand. He has given so much and helped me so much for my son. So I want you all to please put your hands together. The hotel in Miami City, the Institute of the Miami City Hotel and the, the restaurant is from that man, and I thank you. Um, we are doing 50-50 tickets, they're a dollar. We are going to do the drawing at 10. So please, all this money goes to research. It does not go into our pocket. Yes, we have to pay the man. That's what makes them feel really bad to be afraid, but nothing else is going to happen. Um, but I want to thank you all for just being here. And I actually want you to meet my family. My oldest daughter is sick, Danielle. She has that flu, stomach flu. That means the upstairs going out. But I really never introduced you to John's, to my family. Because, see, as a mother, he was healthy. My son was healthy. He was walking, he was talking, he was running, he was riding a bike, he was come on, come in on. wrestling, he was doing everything normal, and he was a Ford model in New York City, which is going to kill me by sharing that. But all of a sudden he started falling down. And the slim girdle 2A disease is, is an awful disease because it attracts people when you already know how to do these things, and then all of a sudden you're losing it. And my son is so strong and he keeps me strong and our family strong. But at this moment, I want to introduce my family. Uh, Trisha, please come up. Trisha? Trisha and John's coming up. He's coming up, Trisha. Where's Trisha? Nicole? Nicole? Okay, Nicole's standing behind the... You met her at the donations and I don't know where Trisha is. She's at the front door and my husband. And to announce, this is all about this beyond labels and limitations. And here's my son, John. muscular dystrophy and uh, at the time you know I was shocked I, I didn't know I thought the rest of my life was ahead of me I was a senior in high school and I was a couple months away from graduating and and here I am giving this diagnosis that um, that I, I didn't have no idea about and uh, so my future of going to college and and a career and, and marriage and, and children um, you know, that for me wasn't something that I, that I saw my future as. I really thought my future was hopeless and, and, uh, and a wheelchair, that's, that's what I thought. And um, so I started to think about like, what, what happened and, you know, is this a mistake? And I look back on my life and in seventh grade, I remember um, kids making fun of the way that I ran. And, um, and they're over at table four. Um, <laughs> no, they're, they're not at table four, they're at table seven. <laughs> so, some of these... I thought it was too loud. Uh, so, 
So basically, uh, and no matter how hard that I tried, you know, they made fun of the way I ran, this was from the seventh grade. And so no matter how hard I tried to, to, to run correctly, but for some reason my legs, they, they didn't want to come up like a normal runner, they would come out. And so I tried, I would lift weights and, you know, I, I tried to be an athlete. And, and no matter what I did, it didn't change anything. And so this, uh, and so obviously the ridicule went on for, for five years. And, and during that time, it was, it was a struggle, uh, not only physically, because uh, I because I couldn't run uh, correctly, but you know the, the mental the mental struggles and, and the emotional struggles and the spiritual struggles and, and questioning like why is this happening to me and what did I do to deserve this and and so then I you know obviously I graduated high school and just kind of tried to live life go to college and, and did that and then I dropped out because I I just didn't feel like I was doing what I didn't know what I wanted to do I mean how how do you go to college and know that okay, I'm going to do a career when 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 you think your career is going to, you know, the rest of your life is going to be in a wheelchair. And so I just, I had, I had to drop out. And so I started working and, and then just trying to make some money. And, and then that too wasn't fulfilling. So I finally went back to school and and, and there's where I got a real uh, harsh uh, um, reality of, of what it's like to have a little girl. I was dating a girl and um, and we were going out for a while and uh, and she broke up with me. and. Um, you know, when, when we asked about it, she said, because I don't know, in five years you could be in a wheelchair. And so that's when I really got like present, like, this is real. Like, you know, there are gonna be people out there who don't wanna be with you because of this. And so at that time, it was like, I just shut myself down emotionally. I thought there's no way that I could ever find somebody or even love myself because no one else does. You know, people making fun of me and whatnot. And so it was, and I say that not to, to, to elicit sympathy from you, but that's just the way it was. And that's where I was at in my life. And so then fast forward, we, we go to 2005. You know, I went back to school, graduated and, and worked. And then in 2005, we, you know, we, we, we got a diagnosis of limb girdle 2A muscular dystrophy. And so we finally found out what exactly is wrong with me. And I thought, here we go. Now we can fix this, right? Um, and then I find out that it's a genetic disorder that I have. And I basically inherited two um, calpain 3 genes uh, from, from my parents. And, and this gene is responsible for protein function. And so that explains why when I was younger, was, no matter how hard I tried and the weights that I lifted, I couldn't correct the genetic coding that was, you know, that was going on. It was a, it's basically a genetic uh, malfunction. And, um, and so that was great to find that out, but that was also, it was very difficult knowing that there's nothing I can do to change that. And, uh, and there's no treatment for it as well, so I'm kind of stuck, right? So then I decide, you know, we need to do something about this. And, and so in 2007, my family and I, we created uh, Beyond Labels and Limitations Incorporated. And we did it for two reasons. We, we wanted to raise awareness about the disorder and, and more importantly, raise uh, money for research. That, that's the most important thing. And so uh, tonight marks our, the beginning of our fifth year of being a nonprofit organization. And, and yeah, it's great. And so basically just the kind of the past four years, what we've been doing is um, we have uh, donated $1,000 to, uh, a, it's called Speak Foundation, which is a conference that um, in Atlanta, Georgia that they put on. It's a weekend long where people from all over the United States can come and have a diagnosis of muscular dystrophy. And they can come and meet other people who have the same disorder as they do. So we, we contribute and help, help, help them you know, with, that, with that conference. We've also donated um, uh, $10,000 to the Coalition to Cure Calpain 3 organization, which we teamed up uh, in last October 2011, and we, um, we brought together 20 researchers from around the world to discuss what is going on with Home Girl 2A. Uh, and this has never been done before, so this is, uh, you know, this is the first step in the journey, and so we're very proud of, of that particular feat. And uh, I got the echo. Um, so, and then the, uh, we also have an online presence. We have a Facebook group of over 400 people from all over the world, and they, some of them have uh, a you know, the disorder. And these are the people who really can't get out, they've never met anybody else. So they can come there, they can ask questions and, and, and answer uh, for other people and really provide support. And then we have a website um, where we have journals. I have a journal of you know, what it's like you know, uh, since 1995, and I also have uh, videos. Uh, to show you physically, because it's really kind of difficult to kind of talk about it, but when you see, you know, you walking and getting up out of chairs and just any daily activities, you know, there really kind of paints a picture of what the disorder is doing. 
Um, and so that's that. And then we, uh, and then finally, the most important thing is that uh, during these four years, we've actually raised thirty-five thousand dollars, and so that is a, a really great uh, a feat that we have done. And uh, and that could not have been possible had it not been for all of you guys coming out here and supporting me uh, over the years. So I just really want to thank all of you for that. And then the last thing that I really want to uh, share here with you is um, uh, a dream that I had. Uh, it's uh, it was an emotional when I was thinking about it. I don't know why it's coming out, but so this dream really kind of put things in perspective for me. Uh, I was I was sentenced to death in this dream, and um, be, before. Day that I was supposed to go to to be put to death, um, I had an hour to go, and so I was looking for my cell phone, and because uh, I wanted to call and plead for my life, I didn't want to die, and uh, I couldn't find it, and so the hour had come where I had to go, and I remember just looking around as I was going there and, and seeing, you know, everything, you know, hearing people talking and and uh, and just seeing objects and uh, real objects. And, and just really being present to what it's like to be alive and all these things that I took for granted. And, uh, and it, it was just the level of, of being in that moment that, you know, like, this is it. This is the last time I'm going to be on Earth. And I don't want to leave yet. And I just kind of want to study things and remember them. And so I got to the, uh, the place where I had to go. And uh, I, I pleaded for my life. And, you know, I told them, you know, I'm 34. And, too young to die. I had so much life to live. Um, and thankfully they let me go. And I walked out of there and I sat down on a bench and, and I literally, and I cried in the dream. And then I woke up and I was crying. Um, the crying woke me up and I was crying in my waking consciousness. And I got there at that moment that, you know, all this stuff about it being difficult and, you know, people making fun of you and, and all that stuff and no one wants to abuse you. But that's not important. It's, it's really about being alive. I mean, it really is a gift to be alive. And so I'm really grateful for where I'm at. And, um, and, and so I don't want you to you know, feel sorry for me or anything, but I just want to extend that to you that, you know, that life is really a gift and, and I'm really grateful to be here in this moment. So thank you.